we have Erdrich's How to Enjoy Games Again. Growing up, I was obsessed with video games. I remember getting my first ever Game Boy and playing Pokemon Red nonstop, or laughing my ass off with my family playing tennis and bowling and Wii Sports, getting absolutely dunked on in Halo 3 by my friends, yeah. and spending way too much time building the ugliest houses you've ever seen in Minecraft. Mood. I loved immersing myself in all these different worlds, and as time went on, I just played more and more different games. I dreamt about the day where I could afford my dream PC, and have the time and money to spend towards any game I could ever want. And yet, as I got older and began to achieve that dream, my motivation to play those video games started to fade. Mm -hmm. I had so much more time now, and an amazing PC, as yeah. well as an absolute chonker of a Steam library. Oh boy, it, it really is Steam libraries and people are like, but why do you have the number of games that you do? And it's the Pokemon 2000, right? The the was is the Power One, right? With the one with Lugia, right? I'm merely a collector. That that meme has never has never been stronger. So why do games no longer feel fun? I had to force myself to open new games, and even then I wouldn't actually play them. I'd just sit there not enjoying myself. Yeah. Nowadays it seems like a lot of people are going through the same thing. As they reach the end of being a teenager and kind of head into their twenties. Their love for something that once dominated their childhood is now wavering. Yeah. If that in any way sounds familiar, then this might be the video for you. Recently, I've been trying different ways to reignite that passion for video games so that they can feel fun for me again. So in this part, I mean, part of it is the piecemeal way that we are being sold games nowadays. There are way too many live services. I'm not opposed to the concept of a live service, but there's very few companies that do it effectively. I have dunked on Halo Infinite, a game which I actually was in the minority of liking uh at you know at launch right i specifically like to campaign about it um uh eh, they, they have not done a good live service job with it like they just they're not selling me on it uh destiny 2 as well i i don't feel they do a good live service model personally there's way too many things like redfall and stuff like, not every game needs to be a live service so but even then that aside it's games that come out you know just there, there are those ones that are good gems, don't get me wrong. Like, Dead Space Remake I actually really liked. For some reason on PC, every subsequent patch they did for some reason kept, you know, destabilizing the experience. So I'll have to do a fresh install before my annual stream of it. However, it's not even that games were built different or better back in the day. Have you seen Sweekens Breaking of, like, Mario Sunshine or Resident Evil 4? Have you seen how broken games can get? Gaming has always been using smoke and mirrors to get an end product. That's why so many speedrunning glitches exist. The issue with it now is that one, a lot more people are using gaming as a mainstream medium and we're a lot more cognizant of it. And two, we're just not willing to let things slide and rightfully so. You know, I would argue the state that Scarlet and Violet launched in, while I did have fun and played through both of them, I do feel that if, if uh, Nintendo and Pokemon do that again, Personally, I will not do. I will not buy another Pokemon game. I will. I will relegate myself to the indie community at that point. In this video, I'm going to be going through five tips that I believe will help you to once again be able to enjoy video games. Mm -hmm. This is a super fun way to get back into games that you're already really familiar with. Oh, speaking maybe, of Destiny 2. <laughs> maybe that passion for a game you've played for years is still there, and you're just looking for a way to mix things up to give yourself more incentive to continue playing it. The best thing about this tip is that you can pretty much apply it to any game you'd like to play. Yeah. Pick a game or even a collection of games and just go into it with a specific challenge in mind. Yeah. It could be trying to win a game using only one specific weapon, or attempting to beat the hardest difficulty in that game. It could be limiting what characters you use or what controls you're allowed to use. Right. Or just trying to complete it within a specific amount of time. One of the best examples and most popular forms of making a game more challenging to make it more fun is probably Pokemon Nuzlocke. Yeah. Implementing all of these new rules has made the game so much harder, but also created this new wave of relevance. For a franchise that, difficulty-wise, is pretty obviously aimed towards kids. Another example is that I'm currently trying to beat Terraria on Master Mode within 100 in-game days. Yeah. And knowing that I'm doing everything with that challenge in mind has made me way more excited to sit down and play the game every single day. Right. The thing is, they don't even have to specifically be challenges. Something else that you can do is to just set specific goals for whatever game it is you're playing. Maybe it's the goal of the entire run of the game, or it's just for the specific session. Mm -hmm. In my newest Minecraft world, my goal is to build my base almost entirely within the new biome that just came out. Even though I've been playing this game for years, and I'm pretty much just doing the same things I always did, the entire vibe of what I'm doing is different because it's all inside this one brand new area. It is. Or you can sit down after work or school and say, hey, Today, I'm going to beat this specific boss or finally complete that one building project. Or I would argue this is just this is an extension of pacing and 
you know, setting healthy expectations. S Speedrunners, for all intents and purposes, are built different. I can do Dead Space 2 on Zealot in about four hours. And that's with me a little out of practice. I can do a full run glitchless in four hours. That being said, there's people that can just incur like they can dwarf that time and they can shave stuff off, you know. And even then, the ability to play an entire game in a sitting, especially if it exceeds three to four hours, maybe isn't the best use of your time. Not saying that you feel bad for doing it right, but you know, that could also be part of the burnout. You could be suffering from burnout in the sense that, well, you know, um, I think Destiny, for example, right? Where Destiny 2, in order to, because you can apparently get like, weapons with three perks and stuff. I think you have to do like, as of now, the recording of this video, you have to do like what six plus tracks on like crucible. And so say if I wanted to riptide, right? Riptide from crucible, got to go uh, redeem those crucible engrams from daddy shacks. Right. And I want a riptide with three perks on it and the perks in some perk slots. Right. I need to reset that like six times reset sh shacks track six plus times. And well, well you have 90 days to do it. I, I can't stand crucible personally. So that's my own, that, that's my own issue, skill issue, if you will. Um, but I mean, like, you know, where the expectation is there of, if you want the best in slot, right. You got, you got to do this. Right. Um, or, Oh, let's see here. Uh, even raids, right. You know, uh, I can do like, I can do rid of nightmares and vow in under an hour with the right team. When we start doing King's fall with newer people and it takes like four plus hours and most of it is just like people not listening, if that makes sense. That's when my attention starts to wander. And if anything, it, it, at that point, is there a better use of my time at this point, right? If you, so to summarize, right? If you go in expecting to be able to do the whole piece of content, the whole content, or you're expecting to be MLG competitive right out the gate in modern Pokemon games, right? Wanting to get VGC stuff done, right? You're gonna theoretically have a worse time. There are people that can absolutely do that. I'm sure Wolf Glick goes into every Pokemon game. He already knows what he wants to build. He's already building it as he's going through the story, getting campaign done, right? You know, I assume he does that. You know, maybe he'll have fun with certain things, but I mean, he has ultimately an end goal in mind, you know? Same with like, I'm assuming Aaron Cybertron Zang, Pokemon DM, you know, I'm assuming this is how they'll go through new Pokemon games. They might have some fun with certain things, but ultimately they do have their end goal in mind. And, you know, they can have fun doing that. There's also people, a lot of people that don't want to do the min-max. Or maybe they just don't like how Pokemon games are quote unquote easier now, right? And it's doing Nuzlocks. Nuzlocks add a fresh twist on the game. It adds difficulty for those that want more difficulty, you know, and ultimately it can just be a better experience for a lot of people. I'm going to beat my fastest time. Sometimes the act of just playing the game can be too vague to get excited for. So making the actions you want to complete within the game more specific can help you get more focused on just getting through the game. Yeah, set your expectations. This one might sound a bit weird, but hear me out. Playing games isn't necessarily immersing yourself in just the game. There's quite a lot that you can do outside the game to get yourself in the mindset, yeah. winding down and relaxing. Humans are creatures of habit. If you get yourself into the habit of getting your gaming environment to be more comfortable, it'll make you feel more excited for when that time to chill out finally comes. Yeah. Pick out your coziest clothes, plan a dinner or some snacks that are fun to eat while you play, and make sure you have some water and other drinks so that you don't have to get up in the middle of a session. Yeah. Maybe hype yourself up with some music from the game or from something else before you play. If you make this a huge big deal over getting to sit down on your chair or couch and just getting to play some games for a few hours, all your favorite snacks, it'll feel way more fun not only during the session, but all the way up to whenever you planned it for. Yeah. Maybe you plan to play games on a Saturday after a long week of work. Don't just come home and go on your phone and then sit down, open a bunch of random games and stuff. Plan what you're going to play, what you'll eat, and the most comfortable clothes to wear during that session. It's kind of like... As a streamer, I actually struggle with this a lot because my backlog is extensive. I, when I get my new model, which is incoming soon, like at the end of this month, right? And towards the end of this month, I'm looking at starting to go through my backlog. But I can attest personally, there are times when I just, I want to play so much, but don't have enough time. And that is an issue that is, that just, it'll compound on itself. So yeah, I absolutely agree with this. If you say, if you want to go and play... Mass Effect 2 again, right? Set a time. Like, I'm going to go play through Mass Effect 2 at this point in time. If you really, for some reason, say the following Wednesday when you wanted to play it, don't want to play Mass Effect 2, don't force yourself, obviously. But 
make it an event, make it something that you can tell yourself, hey, I'm going to go do this. I want to do this. I want to go through this on this day. And that's perfectly reasonable and acceptable. And I arguably it's healthy. Once again, it goes back to point one of setting your goals, setting expectations, setting in this case, point two, setting the expectation that, you know, Sunday, I'm going to go through Root of Nightmares and Destiny. Or, you know, when I get my model, I'm going to go through Mass Effect uh, 2, right? Something like that, right? It, set it so that way it feels less like a chore or a job and more that you want to do it. Planning a date with yourself. Only it's not sad. Yeah. I yeah, promise. Yeah. My mindset is if you're going to do it, you should do it right. A accurate, yes. I think one of the hardest pills to swallow when it comes to gaming is that maybe the game that you put all those hours into every single day is just not that fun. Yes. Any game can be someone's favorite. Yes. But it would be a lie to say that every game ever created was just created to be a good game. If the game I can have fun with something like Destiny 2. After a while, I don't want to do certain grind things. I just don't. I don't want to keep up with some arbitrary processes. You know, a couple thousand hours in, you'd think you'd have, you know, a perfect exotic. No, that's not the case. And honestly, it's just the looter shooter genre, right? If I was to play a game like uh, uh, Tears of the Kingdom, right? And I, I've played a stream of it and played some stuff off stream, which I'm going to get back to at some point. Ultimately, just the game doesn't resonate with me. Part of it is because it's I don't think it's a $70 experience personally. I think that was I, I'm treating it like it's a full $70 full experience. I personally don't see it for Tears of the Kingdom. I know it's going to be a hot take in our field of comments now. However, if I'm not having fun with <laughs> Reggie, right? If it's not fun, why bother? Someone else can like Tears of the Kingdom. That's completely acceptable. I can like Majora's Mask, where someone like Eager Raptor can hate Majora's Mask. I, I love the bit where Aaron's in Snow, uh, Snowhead uh, Temple, right? And he is losing his shit. Where he is just like, just losing his mind at Majora's Mask. Because one for me, it's funny too. It's it's funny because like as much as he shits on Majora's Mask, you know, I'm like I agree with some of his sentiment. I'm like, yeah, these are things that are wrong with Majora's Mask. However, as pointed out in my Sequelitis React video, which is up on the channel by the way, right? Sequelitis reacting to Ocarina of Time: Link to the Past. Some of these same complaints were are are in 2D Zelda games. You know, if you want to make on that on that tangent, if you want to make certain points make sure to acknowledge the 2D or the other side of it doing the same things or lack thereof. It's, it, it's, that's not an argument song. This has been an argument for over, what, a decade at this point? I don't know, since the video's been out. I digress, moving on. But, like, there are going to be games where, like, that. Some I know someone who has their favorite game as Zelda the Minish Cap, right? Uh, you know, and honestly, good for them. I know people that Sky... I've been talking... I talked to someone who left a comment recently how Skyward Sword is their favorite Zelda game. And while I've heard Ego Raptor just hate on this game, while I've heard people hate on Skyward Sword, I can't wait to try it. I want to try both the Wii and the HD version because there is always going to be a game that is someone's favorite game. It doesn't necessarily have to be yours. And you can even go into it saying, I want to understand why somebody likes this game, which is one, point one, setting the expectation, two, making an event out of it, three, it may not be your favorite game, but if you can have fun with it, right? See how we're all using this sequential logic to have more fun with games that we may have written off before? Games you play make you feel frustrated, annoyed, or like you're just wasting your time on them. Yeah. It might be time to try some new games. And trust me, this is coming from someone who used to think League of Legends was fun. I mean, like, it can be, yeah. but most of the time it's not. With friends Leading your comfort zone can help you to immerse yourself in worlds that maybe you've never tried before. Recently, I just tried this random free game on Steam for the sake of just making a video on it. All I really wanted to do going in was give myself a proper chance of trying it. Yeah. And then I found myself sinking hours upon hours into this game yeah. because I was so determined to beat it. It was genuinely so fun sitting down and just going through the motions of the game over and over again. I've listened, I've watched too much Henya from V Shoujo because I read it as Dayo. Wow, that that's not what that says. To try and beat it. And I never would experience that if I didn't force myself to try a new game. And like I said, that game was free. So you don't necessarily need to spend money on new games just no. to try them. I mean, that's why demos exist, right? Not that many games nowadays have demos, but you get me. There might even be a good chance that you're like me and you've bought games over the years just to never even try them. Oh, so, baby, my my Steam dumpster diving. I can't use that because someone already has that. My Steam dumpster dive is massive. I have so 
many games on Steam. It is actually concerning. Well, maybe give one of them a chance because any game has the potential to suddenly be your new favorite. Yeah, absolutely. It doesn't even need to be a new game. No. Maybe there's a specific game mode in your current favorite that you avoid. There have been many times where I tried different maps or modes in a game years ago and decided they weren't fun just because of one negative experience. Then I come back to them and realize that they're some of my favorites. Yeah. This is definitely interesting how perceptions change over time. The hardest tip on the list, and I fully acknowledge that making friends can be hard. Yeah. I've recently been trying to branch out online to find people who play the same games as me. But nowadays, the internet is so saturated with so many different types of people, and figuring out who you'd get along with or who plays the game the same way as you is a challenge in itself. But it still pays off once you finally find them. Yeah. For me, I use Discord servers created for specific games like Minecraft or Destiny 2 or Phasmophobia, yeah. and then I went into the looking for group channels and just kind of scouted people out. Eventually I saw someone who I thought looked cool post a request for Phasmophobia, and by forcing myself to join that one session with that person, it ended up leading to me having a blast for hours and eventually making three new friends to play that game with. Yeah. We even have a new group chat dedicated to planning out new games to try together. Reaching out at all is difficult, and not everyone you meet will be the right person for you. This tip itself might not even be for everyone. You could be very comfortable playing games on your own, which is completely okay. I too really like the single player experience sometimes. But if you've been avoiding sending that game request message because you're worried it'll all go wrong, yeah. sometimes you just have to force yourself. Worst case scenario, it's not fun and you can just leave. But best case scenario, you make some long-term friends to play that game and maybe more with. Yeah, you can absolutely do that. Okie dokie. And arguably games, there, there's the argument that any game is better with friends. I mean, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I could play uh, Battlefront 2 EA, right? The the newer Battlefront 2. I mean, I, I've had fun with multiplayer solo. Be, but with friends, I mean, just the, the enjoyment amplifies. Even with not even with just stream viewers sometimes, right? The enjoyment just amplifies. I have to be careful as a content creator because, unfortunately, people have come into the voice chat and said things that I've had to give them verbal warnings for that just some of them weren't okay. So I can't. I'm kind of unfortunately moving away from that model as much as I want that. I just can't do it. I can't risk the stream ban. <laughs> I really can't. Uh, but even then, just even as a streamer, maybe play something with your audience. You know, maybe you know, have them do text chat while you're in it. While you know, while your voice is going through to the stream, right? That way, you're avoiding some you know potential ban issues, right? And you're still able to play with your community and you know make bonds that way i have the fortune of being on the streamer and youtuber side of things so i can see things a little different way even if you're just a regular gamer right take a chance join the discord server from somebody right join um join somebody's lfg you know maybe search on twitch maybe see if somebody needs to lfg some certain people or if, or if there's an event looking for people to play with right there's a number of ways in which you can get into these groups I'm adding this extra bonus tip because although I think it can be extremely helpful for a specific type of person, I also understand that it's very situational. Yeah. Nevertheless, a tip that I think could help you enjoy games more is to simply livestream it. If you know you enjoy the games you play and mostly just have a hard time with committing to them or focusing yeah. on them, then streaming them live could help with adding a little bit of pressure for you to just focus on the game. You'd also be surprised how fun it is to talk alongside playing the game. You don't even have to commentate if you'd like, yeah. instead just focusing on streaming the game specifically. Knowing that someone could be watching is just enough anxiety to make you actually play a game without being genuinely distressing. Yeah. My partner has a very hard time focusing on video games, so she recently decided to try live stream a new one she wanted to try out. And it went great. She was able to actually focus on the game and outwardly vocalize her inner monologue for a whole two hour session of gaming. Again, awesome. I know this tip will not be for everyone. It's a very specific thing to suggest, and if you're just not comfortable with streaming, then there are plenty of other tips in this list to try. Right. But maybe it's something you've already considered. And if so, this is some encouragement from me. Go ahead and try it. If you're just doing it for fun, you don't need to be worried about having the best commentary or gameplay or getting views or having people chat. No. If it helps you to focus on your gaming, then that's great. If not, don't worry. This last tip might be for you. If you treat it as a hobby and you treat it as something like you just do, I mean, yeah, you could do that. So say, for example, if you're like, I, like for me, I'm playing through Final Fantasy 14, right? And I'm in post ARR with two characters that are already 90, right? It's how I play the game. Just let's move on. Uh, you know, if you hop on stream, right? And because I have trouble focusing on the on the MSQ right now, the main story, and I hop on and do my roulettes and maybe I can do that because, you know, there's that back and forth from the audience, from the Twitch chat, right? Sometimes that is more than enough to shift your opinion on a game. 
Uh, and even then, you don't have to be, you know, you don't have to have a model like me. You don't have to have a you know representation in that capacity. Uh, you could just share your screen. You could stream your console, right? There's a number of things that you could do. And, excuse me, there's a number of things that you can do. And even then, you could just stream the gameplay as sort of a, like, footage backlog, if you will, which I've honestly been thinking about. I've been debating on just doing maybe streams to YouTube or something. And that way it gets YouTube traffic and I'm able to play through games and it's diversifying. So that way all my, not all my eggs are in one basket, if you will. Right. I think that makes sense. While the other tips on this list might seem hard, this might be the only one that you're upset to hear. That's why I kept it for last. But unfortunately, it's just true. Yes. Sometimes the best thing to do when you don't enjoy something you used to is to take a break. Yes. I believe that the reason this doesn't work for a lot of people is because they don't commit to it. If you want to try to take a break from gaming, you should really try to focus on the other things in your life, such as hobbies or spending time with friends and family. If you keep trying over and over to enjoy the same games and it's not working, yeah. then what harm is there in taking a week or two to spend that time on something else? Yeah. Of course, it's not that simple, but maybe you can combine it with some other tips on this list to make it easier. You could reach out to some friends and plan to play this new game together on the weekend, or maybe a fun challenge in a game you already play together. Then take a break from games up until that day. And on the day- So for me personally, on this, I'm, for all intents and purposes, taking a break from Destiny 2. With the disappointing state of the game, with the consistent maintenance to the point that it's actually it makes me anxious to play Destiny because I, I I got I've gotten kicked from a couple raids for just oh we're doing back end maintenance and oh well you shouldn't get kicked and then it kicks me and it's just like whatever whatever Bungie whatever like I'm anxious to play the game for an extended period of time so you know what I do following this list right one I choose what I want to play. Right. So I want to play it on this day. I want to make a goal. I set a realistic expectation. I'm going to go run Root of Nightmares. This is my goal. This is going to be a for footage thing. I, I want to do this. Right. I want the raw footage. And, you know, I make an event out of it instead of just going, oh, I'm going to run Root of Nightmares. I go, hey, Sunday, I need to do this. D2 Raid Vet, I need to do this. Right. And hence that leads into the third point. Or, well, I guess technically the fourth point, right? Finding people to play with, right? And that's where I have the community of D2 raid vets in the server that I've built up. I feel confident that if I, I need, a, if we need a mechanic done, I don't have to ask if they know how the mechanic is done. They just know. Because I've raided with them enough that I felt comfortable giving them a role and I can ping them when I want to do something for like footage and stuff like that, right? And then going into this fifth point, right? Point three, I can't remember off the top of my head. So apologize. Point five, after my Root of Nightmares run, I'm still going to take a break from the game. It's acceptable to say I I don't want to for whatever reason, right? You know, I don't want to give Destiny metrics. I don't want to I don't want to award behavior of not communicating with a with a community and a abysmal paltry state of the game and stuff they've done. I don't want to reward that with metrics. I have other things that are just worth my time more. I value my time, contrary as it seems, right? And as if someone else, if that's their favorite game, awesome. I totally get it. As somebody that was addicted at the end of season of the Seraph and unfortunately was broken from that addiction by their own maintenance, right? I get it. For me personally, I just need to move on. And after I run that Raid of Nightmares, I still have other things in my life that I can do. If a game is going to demand your time and it's not worth your time, you may need to reevaluate how often you play the game if you play it at all. Day, make sure to get loads of snacks and make your space more comfortable so it'll be even more fun. Yeah. And there's a good chance you'll spend the whole time taking a break, being excited for that one day. Yes. And of course, there are so many factors as to why games can be hard to enjoy nowadays. There are problems such as having too many options, uh, not being able to access or run the games you enjoy. Yep. Or even problems like depression and ADHD can get in the way of you enjoying yourself. Yeah, it can. However, nine times out of ten, burnout is the biggest factor. And taking a proper break can help you to take a step back and reapproach games with a new mindset. Yes, it can. And it's healthy too. I hope that this video can help you reignite that passion for gaming. These tips come straight from my experience, but I'm also still figuring out how to enjoy all the games I was once crazy about. But if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing as it really helps me out. Maybe share this video with someone you know who's struggling with enjoying games recently. 
And if you have any thoughts on what I talk about in this video, good or bad, or suggestions, please let me know in the comments below. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time. I thought this was incredibly informative. I liked this video and hopefully you did too. I will take my react content as the quote unquote mega comment, right? As just a comment section, but effectively just, you know, in reaction form, love the content, love the flow of it. Audio was really good. Uh, recommendations, potentially uh, personal challenges you loved, right? Top five challenges that made me enjoy gaming more, right? Keep that positivity going. Uh, top five, um, something like, you know, top five uh, <laughs> uh, things I've done, right? Top five games, uh, top five games. I didn't know I liked till I tried them, something like that. You know, keeps the positivity going. It still has that top five format and it's still easily digestible. Something just, I thought this was great. And if you are watching on the React channel, I absolutely recommend you go over and watch Erdrix. This was an amazing piece of content. Love what they're putting out. And they do bring a lot of really good points to the table.